Today I'm going to demonstrate how to do the back of a rose. And here's my practice one I did for you. And I'll show you the photograph I'm going from. This is the photograph. And now we'll get started. I am using a Stay Wet palette this time. This is called a Masterson Stay Wet palette. This is the small size. And I will link to it in my blog post if anybody want to check it out. Uh, it keeps the acrylics wet. If you can see underneath here is a sponge. This is the special paper you get with it. You wet and then you put your paints on top of it and it keeps it wet longer and uh, they blend a little bit better because they don't get dry and thick and gloppy. Though I tend to sometimes get my brush a little gloppy. Now first I'm going to start by loading my brush with this um, light pink. I think it's a pink poodle or pink quartz or let me look at it. Let me see. Oh, it's a baby pink by Deco Art Americana. Let me put some over here make sure it's the same pink. Well, it's a little bit different color pink so I don't know which one I put on my palette but it, it's close enough. You see here's the pink. I load my brush and I'm gonna just kind of lay in my outline I'm just going to kind of do a ovalish shape. Excuse my neighbor driving up. They've got loud trucks. And because I want the background petals to be a little darker, I'm now going to load some, I, I have a dirty brush, some of my fuchsia pink into my brush. And I'm going to kind of just look at my photograph and see that the back petals are kind of over this direction and I'm just going to kind of lay in some petals. I'm not very precise. I'm just kind of getting the general shape. If I want to get them a little bit darker, I go back and dip into some darker fuchsia and um, blend it down in there. And just a little one over here, maybe. Now those are going to be the back petals. And all of them are going to be coming towards, all my petals, I'm gearing them towards a, a center point. That's where the stamen's going to come out from. Now I'm going to go and load my brush with the lighter pink on one corner and the dark pink on the other. I'm just going to blend it on my palette a little bit. And then I'm going to follow my photograph. Here's another back petal. I blend it down in. Now my photograph shows the center being more white, so I'm adding a little more white in. Blend it on my brush. Now this petal down here that's overlapping that petal is more light. Now if I wanted to, which I think I may, I don't know, uh, I could wipe up my brush so I'm getting less of the fuchsia and just the light pink and the white. But I can come back and redo that and decide that's what I want to do. And I can come and streak more white in as I want. But remember I'm coming to a point down to there. So that's my intention. And this back petal is actually underneath this one, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to come along and just make that a back petal. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of more of the fuchsia to outline it with and blend it down in. And I keep layering. With roses it's all about layering the petals. Now this one there's a petal that's underneath this petal over here so I'm just going to put a petal in there. Lots of white in the center because you want it going whiter towards the center. So kind of blend that in with the corner of my brush. And this next petal has a little more fuchsia in it. So it's going to come up around. I 
heading towards the center. And I blend that in. Now the last petal, I think it's going to be right there. It's kind of a largish petal. Lots of white. Doesn't have to be lots of white. You can pick what you want, but I'm trying to differentiate it from the other petals. And it's going to come up, cross over all of these petals, kind of come to a point, a little bit more of a point, and then back down. See, it's not perfectly curved, scallopy, or whatever. It's kind of, I follow what the picture is showing me and fake it. And if I wanted to, I could use a slightly darker pink that's not the fuchsia to come and outline some of these. Okay, I just want the white in there. Thin that down. I want that a little bit more white, so I'm going to blend some white in there. And then I will put this brush down and I will get my green for my stamen. Now when this dries, you can actually come in and shadow along here and I'll show you that so you get the dimension you want. Oh, did I put my green upside down? Yep, I did. Okay, on here I have two greens. I have the Evergreen. This is Deco Art Americana Evergreen. And wasabi green and I'm going to start with the stamen. I'm loading just my brush with the evergreen. Another loud truck neighbor and I'm going to draw in my little stamen. It's kind of an upside down triangle and I'll bring down my stem. Now I'm going to come into the wasabi on one corner, kind of blend it with the evergreen and then I'm going to make little tendrils. Oh, that one didn't go. And how I do that is press down and lift, press down and lift, press down and lift. Now if I don't like that, if it's too light or too blended in, I'll wait till it dries and then come back in. And this doesn't have to be perfectly square there. It could be like that. And that is how I do the back of a rose and some little leaves there. And once this dries, I'll show you how you can shadow to get a little more dimension if you want, or you could just leave it like this and it would be just fine. So now I'll just show you this one has dried, my one sample, and then that's the one, the other one I painted for you. Um, sometimes I shadow them to give them more dimension. So um, here's how I do it. Here I have a small brush. You can do this with a larger brush. I have it loaded with floating medium. And then um, I have a little bit of Payne's Gray. It depends on the design, which color I want to shadow with. Sometimes I'll even shadow with a darker pink. Um, a lot of this is going to be Payne's Gray. We'll just work along here with the Payne's Gray and see how that does. And then we work it along there. That's the shadowing with the Payne's Gray. And you can walk it out further if you want in areas or um, leave it as it is. I'm going to show you now what the um, burnt umber looks like. I'm loading it the same way. And I kind of work it onto it on my palette. So it's just the corner of the brush. And then here I go in there. And I'm kind of getting it on the design, so I'll just finger it off, wipe it off with my finger. And then just shadow a little bit. Now if you want to do like some here on the buds too, you can do that too to um, make it look like those are behind more than it already does. You can do that and just kind of blend it in. The beauty of it is if it's if it's dry and you don't really like it, you can just kind of rub it off and it'll take most of it off. If you want to take it all off, you just get a damp rag and kind of do that. But that's the color the burnt umber is as a shadow color. And it can walk across your brush and you might not like it. So I just kind of blend it in or out with my finger. 
And that is how I shadow to give it a little bit of dimension. I'll go along the stem at times. And I would go underneath this stem just to give it a little shadowing. There you have your back of your rose.